Does someone in your cruising crew have food allergies? Or perhaps are you expecting a visit from someone who does? Food labels are your friend. Hi there, I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, I'll share what you need to know about food allergy listings on food packaging. And yes, you can get the information you need, even in remote cruising destinations. Now, this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by YouGoWear. YouGo has the only waterproof, floating, phone, and tablet cases using dry suit zipper technology. Invest in your safety because if you don't protect, you can't connect. Your electronics are fully functional while inside, and there's plenty of room for your keys, cash, and cards. To get the only dry bag on the market with zero device fails, visit yougoware.com. That's U-G-O-W-E-A-R.com. Use coupon code SAVE20BG for 20% off. You go. Just add water. If you or a member of your family has a food allergy, you're probably used to carefully checking food labels. In the U.S., the FDA requires food manufacturers to list not just the ingredients, but whether any of the eight most common food allergens are present. These eight, milk, eggs, peanuts, tree nuts, fish, shellfish, soy, and wheat, account for about 90% of all allergic reactions. There are apparently some exceptions to the law, but most foods do carry these labels. This label is a godsend for anyone dealing with food allergies, as it's almost impossible for the layperson to know the names of all the subcomponents of a given substance. For example, when my husband Dave was diagnosed with a milk allergy, I was given a list of over 30 items to watch for, including beta-lactoglobian, casein, caseinate, including ammonium caseinate, calcium caseinate, magnesium caseinate, potassium caseinate, and sodium caseinate. Delactose or demineralized whey. Yeah, the law of requiring simple labeling is much better. Not only is it helpful for the people with food allergies, it's a huge help if you're having someone with food allergies for a visit. When we went to visit Denny and LaDonna on BeagleNet, for example, the labeling made it so much easier for her to provision items that wouldn't cause problems for Dave. I just sent her a photo of this type of label and told her to watch for things listing milk. But what about travel in foreign countries? Do I have to learn all the names in foreign languages? Well, the good news is that most countries now have some sort of simple labeling requirement, Maybe not identical to the U.S. labeling, but sufficient so that you only need to know the primary name of what you're allergic to. For example, in Mexico, that's leche. All you have to know is that look for leche anywhere in there. Soya is soy. Um, Huevos are eggs. Nuez are nuts. You can go on down the list and just figure out the things that you need to do. For those who are highly allergic, you can even see things that say that it's produced in a factory that other products containing certain products, things like leche for milk, eggs, huevos, nuts, nuts, you can find all of that information right there. You still have to carefully read labels, but this, even in foreign languages, makes it much easier to cruise with food allergies, particularly if you in places where you don't speak the language fluently. It still can be hard to get complete information in restaurants, in places like bakeries where labeling is generally not required, but this is a huge step in the right direction and makes it much, much easier. Hey, did you find this episode to be helpful or useful to you? Please leave a review and tell your friends. And I hope you're subscribed to the Boat Galley Podcast. Until next week, thanks.